Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming up today. I couldn't say that line for some reason. Let's get started. I don't like any of those. I don't, I don't like that. Can I do it over? Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY home decor crafts today. I've got a few sweet friends who's gonna be joining me. I'll explain those details a little bit later, of course. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some rustic primitive fabric fall crafts. So let's get started with project number one. So for this project, I'm gonna be making this acorn. I actually made a couple of them. It'd be cute like in a set of three. And I just hand drew this pattern so it's nothing fancy, but I will have a free printable for you. And basically what you're gonna do, cut your pattern out, obviously. You've got the top and the bottom. I'm gonna use the top on kind of a fleecy, dark brown fabric. You can choose whatever kind of fabrics you want. If you want all fabric, all fleece, whatever you'd like. If you're making like a set of three, it'd be fun to kind of, you know, three fabrics, especially for the bottom part that go together, and then you make all the top the same, okay? So, like, all my top would be in the dark brown fleece, and then, of course, all my bottom would be in fabrics that look good together. Now, this fabric I'm working with now is a homespun fabric I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I think the fleecy fabric was something I got at Walmart, Okay, so get that, both of those pieces cut out. Now your top piece, on the pattern, there's like a dotted line here. So that just goes to show you where your top piece is going to kind of fit onto your bottom piece. It's just about a half an inch down onto your bottom piece. If you're a gluer, you can use Fabri-Tac or, you know, fabric glue or a hot glue gun. You can go ahead and work that now. I am going to do a little bit of gluing and sewing. So I'm going to use these yarn darner needles and this really thin twine. And I'm using the yarn darner needles because it has a bigger eye opening for this thin twine to fit through. And Hobby Lobby has, you know, like thin twine. So I'm going to glue first. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue at the bottom of that top piece and then glue it to the bottom piece. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lay my other bottom piece on top of the other bottom piece <laughs> so that when I glue this top piece onto that bottom piece, it all matches. <laughs> okay, make sure I've got it glued in the right position. If you're a gluer, start from the point at the bottom of your acorn, glue all the way around, but leave that center open because then you're going to stuff it and then you can go ahead and glue that closed. Okay, I want to add just a little bit of sewing. This is optional, and I'm just going to start from the back of my fabric down near the bottom of that top piece. I'm going to go from the back to the front, and then I'm just going to make a little straight stitch about a quarter inch apart. I'm going to go from the front to the back here, in case we have any beginners. Again, this is optional, and then I'm going to go about a quarter inch apart. There's my little stitch, quarter inch apart on the back side. I'm going to go from the back to the front. And then about a quarter inch apart again, I'm going to go from the front to the back. And you're just going to kind of do this stitch all the way across, okay? You could go a little bit quicker if you want. Of course, you can do like a running stitch like here. I'm just going to do a couple of pleats. See how my needle doesn't go all the way through? Just kind of goes through the back a little bit and right back to the front. See that? So I've got a couple of little pleats. And then I can pull it all the way through just a little bit quicker if you want. And then I do a couple of stitches at once, all right? I'm going to repeat this process again. And we're going to get this finished all the way to the end. And then this is what it looks like, nice and easy. And then on the back side, I'm just going to take my needle and kind of put it through that homespun fabric a little bit, making sure that I don't come through the front. So that's what I'm checking here. Just so that I can make a little loop here and then run my needle through it and tie a little knot and cut it off. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same procedure on this one. All right, now both of these are done, and now I'm going to come around and glue my pieces together. Make sure you have wrong sides together. And then I'm going to start at that point, and I'm going to add my glue along the edge all the way around. Remember, we're leaving that point open because we want to stuff it a little bit later. So just adding that glue, just a little line all the way around. Did I say that once already? Add your glue all the way around. There's a third time for you, so you know. <laughs> and then once I get down to the bottom, obviously I've got that end open. And then we'll go ahead and stuff our little acorn here. Okay? And then just stuff it as full as you want it, obviously. It's just how you like it. And then once you get all your stuffing in here, go ahead, of course, and 
glue the end closed. Now, I want to add a little more sewing. So if you want to do like I'm going to do, leave that little tip open just a smidge. I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. It's just so we can hide our little knots from our twine that we're going to be using. All right, so close and I left that little bit open. Okay, again, this part is optional. I'm going to open right in between those two layers. I'm going to bring my needle through Pull it all the way so I can hide my knot right there between the two layers later when we go to glue it. Okay, that's all this opening is for, just to hide our little knots. And then I'm just going to come through just like we did across the edge of the top part of the acorn and make little stitches all the way around. Now, it will be cute any way that your heart desires to make this. It would be cute as I'm doing it here with the stitches all the way around. It would be cute with just stitches at that, you know, part of the top part of the acorn that we did. It would be cute just glued all the way around. If you want to take a sewing machine and sew around it, it would be cute that way. You do you. Any way you do it will be fabulous. Now, once I've come back to where I started, I'm going to bring my needle through just through that one piece of fabric. Okay, and so I'm gonna split this open and then I'm just gonna come in and just make a little stitch in here to close it off, make a little loop and then bring my thread through that loop and make a knot and cut it off and then I'm gonna glue that little tiny opening closed. Okay, nice and easy. All that just so we can hide our little end knots. And then this is how it looks when it's all completed. Now, let's decorate this up. So I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. I'm gonna add a little moss over here, the right-hand side. And then I'm gonna bring in a wood leaf uh, using Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. I'll be using this ink throughout the, all the projects today. And I'm just gonna ink the edges of the leaf a little bit, just kind of around the points to darken it up. And I've got some cute little beaded pit berries here. I've got like picks from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to kind of cut off this little pine cone. And then I've got some buttons and a little rusty star, a little rusty safety pin. And what I want to do is just take a little piece of this muslin fabric here, rip about an inch off, and then I'm just going to tie it into a little bow. And I know it looks a little light right now, but we'll fix that up. Okay. Perfect. It's all nice and rustic. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in the leaf kind of behind that moss there. And then I'm going to add in that little piece of pine cone pick. I'm going to add in the little pit berries coming up here. We're going to glue that into place. Whatever you want, any little bits and pieces are going to look cute here. I'm going to take this little rusty safety pin and add a couple of buttons and then the star. And then I've got a little twine here. I'm going to just tie it into a little bow. And then I'll take that little safety pin ensemble and I'll clip it right through the center of that twine bow. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and glue our little muslin bow there at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue our little twine bow ensemble here right in the center of that. And then I'm going to take some of that ink and then I'm gonna ink everything up. I'll ink it up a little bit more later, but I'm starting to ink it up now because I wanted the lighter bow to kind of go in with the lightness uh, in the plaid of the fabric, but you know, it still needs to be a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna wrinkle and crinkle my little bow tails here and just kind of glue them into place so it stays all nice and cute. I love the wrinkle and the crinkle. Perfect, and now I'm going to come back in with some more of that ink and ink it up more, make it look a little bit darker. It's still just a little too light for me at this point. I did make another acorn um, off camera, so I will show that in the final looks. And now I'm going to take some of this pumpkin spice and this spray adhesive, and I'm just going to spray the spray adhesive where I want it, and then I'm going to sprinkle the pumpkin spice on top just to give a little more of a primitive look, I'll turn it over and kind of tap off the excess, and then that makes this project complete.
today's video, I have Jen, who is Mother Time here on YouTube, and Tracy, who is Country Charm by Tracy. We three are coming together. Our styles are very similar, and so we wanted to come together for a collaboration to bring you lots of fun fall inspiration. I will have their channel links in my description box, but more importantly, I will have a link to a playlist so it's readily available for you. I'll have it in my description box, pinned in my comments, so you can go check out all the videos in one location. I know you're going to love it. Thank you, Jen and Tracy, for collaborating with me. This is so super fun. Let's move on to project number two. For this pumpkin, I'm going to use another piece of fabric here. I got this pinstripe fabric at Walmart. Now, this fabric is 23 and a half inches across and 18 inches tall one piece. Now I also have another free printable for you. I have printed this out on fabric so it'll be a PDF for you. Link in my blog to all the printables and patterns and all that whatnot stuff today. Now I printed this from my inkjet printer. This is the easiest way I've found. I've tried all tons of ways to print on the fabric. This works for me. I can't tell you if it's going to work on a laser printer or anything like that but this works for me so just try it and see if it works for you. Now I'm starting with just a plain piece of copy paper and I'm gonna use the spray adhesive on it and I'm just gonna spray a light coat all the way down the paper. And then I usually use like a muslin fabric uh, and then I fold it in half so that I can you know, manipulate it easier onto the paper and then just lay out that fold and then smooth it onto the paper. Now, you don't want any sticky paper around the edges of your fabric left or it'll stick to your roller so you want to cut that off and then of course you want to cut off that extra fabric okay I've tried this technique with taping around the edges that worked for a while but then I found like the spray adhesive method like this works wonderful so I've got my fabric trimmed and now I'm going to just trim off that piece of paper and it's okay if it's a little thinner in some places and not in others and then I just run it through my printer and then it comes out like this all right, and then you go ahead and peel it off. Now, this has been sitting a few days, so sometimes it's a little harder to peel, but it's still fine. And sometimes if you just peel it right off, easy. And then as you can see here, my paper is sticky from that adhesive, but my fabric is not. There's no residue on the fabric whatsoever, All right? So again, this method works with my inkjet printer. I don't know about laser printer. So now what I wanna do is just kind of add a little slits here because I want to rip the fabric around my little recipe here so that it looks a little more rustic. So I'm just gonna kind of determine what size I want it to be, start by making a little slit first and then rip it down. Okay, just like that so I get those nice frayed edges. We'll come to the last part here and rip that off. And then I wanna add a little color behind this. So I've got this uh, orangey fabric from Hobby Lobby and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just gonna make a little slit and then I'm going to adjust it and tear it in all the places I need to do that so that there's just like maybe a little quarter to a half inch edge peeking around my primary piece of fabric here. Okay, and then this is what it'll look like when I'm done. And then I'm gonna use, if you're a gluer, go ahead and Use your Fabri-Tac glue and glue that piece to your secondary piece if you have two pieces. All right, I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine and sew on my recipe onto that secondary piece. If you don't use a secondary piece, don't quite glue it down yet. If you're a gluer, don't quite glue it down onto your fabric yet. And I'm going to go around twice on this and just kind of make that second stitching border around just kind of in and out and funky just to make it look fun. I'm not trying to be straight with my sewing by any means. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm marking the center of my fabric. My fabric's laying horizontal. I'm marking the center Okay, and I want to make sure that my piece is centered side to side and top to bottom. And then if you're a gluer, you can go ahead and glue down your pieces here. One or two pieces, or maybe you want to triple layer it, I don't know. Um, and if you're a sewer, I'm going to go ahead and sew that down to the center. Now, at this point, as I'm sewing this down to the center of my pumpkin fabric here, I wasn't going to add any sections into it. So that's why I'm going ahead and sewing it all down first but in the end in a little bit I decide it doesn't look right it just looks like a tube of fabric with a stick coming out the top <laughs> now once that is sewn or glued on you're going to take your fabric right sides together and you're going to glue 
If you're a gluer, down the short edge of your fabric. If you're a sewer, go ahead and sew down the short edges of your fabric so that you have one long tube when you're done. Now, I'm going to use some upholstery thread here only because it's stronger thread. You could use regular thread. Just be careful as you're pulling through it. You could use dental floss or something like that if you want. But I like the strength of upholstery thread. So I'm going to cut off a nice long piece, put it through my needle. I want to double it at the end. I want to double the two pieces together. So I'm going to take the two ends together and tie it in a knot. Now you want to make sure you're at the bottom of your recipe. So just double check that and make sure you're at the bottom of your recipe because we're working at the bottom of our pumpkin. And we're just going to make a gathering stitch. Can see that we're just going to pleat it onto our fabric. I'm about a half inch away from the edge and probably about a quarter inch apart in my stitches. The how far apart your stitches are not really important but just try to keep how far away you are from the edge about the same all the way around and we're just pleating back and forth onto our needle so that we can pull all our threads together when we're done and close our end. Okay, now you can just do one stitch at a time, kind of like we did on our acorn. That would work too, but I'm going to do this all the way around. Now, when I get right next to where I started, what I'm going to do, leave the needle on the thread, and I'm going to take where that knot is, and I'm going to pull that out, okay, so that we have kind of two long threads. Again, the needle is still on. We're, we're going to use that, and I'm going to pull those both of those threads together, making sure that our ruffly edge is all upright, right, and then pull it so it closes, okay? And then I'm just going to tie a couple of knots here, still my needle's on, and then I'm going to wrap my thread around that area both sides and then tie a couple of knots. I don't want this to come out. And then the reason and then the reason my needle's still on cuz I'm going to go ahead and even take my needle through that whole cluster of ruffle there a couple of times, one end to the other, going back and forth. You don't have to do this part. I think just tying it in a knot and kind of wrapping it around it and tying in a couple knots will work, but I just want to make sure it stays together. And then once I get that where I want, I'll tie a couple of knots here. And then I'll go ahead and cut my threads off. And then turn your pumpkin inside out. Okay. And this is what our bottom should look like right here once it's all completed. Just like that. Okay. Now you're going to go ahead and stuff your pumpkin. Once that's done, your pumpkin's nice and stuffed. We're going to go ahead and close up the top. And we're going to do that stitch again just like we did at the bottom. All the way around so we can cinch it closed. All right, but you have to make sure you do one thing first before you cinch it completely closed. So do your little running stitch all the way around when you come to where that knot is, kind of where you started from the beginning, just like we did at the bottom. Go ahead and pull that out so you have two long pieces of thread here. Got them both here to the left side, pulling those out. Now before you stitch it closed, you need your stem in there. I'm gonna use the stick from the backyard I had some nice good branches I cut into pieces for stems. I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to go ahead and close, pull and close that top together. Tie a couple of knots around in there. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and cut that off. And then I'll go ahead and stuff those ends down inside. Now, at this point, it doesn't look like a pumpkin to me. Here's my brain like it looks like a tube with a stick coming out the top. So I decided to go ahead and make some sections here, okay? And it actually kind of turns out cute. It's different, but it's cute. So what I've got here is some fishing line. You guys, you know I usually make my round pumpkins with fishing line. And I have this really long upholstery needle. I'm going to thread my fishing line through that upholstery needle. And I have a really long one because it actually fits all the way through our little recipes section area there. And I'm just going to come down at the bottom here and I'm going to feed that needle all the way underneath that recipe and come back up at the top. And you should have a knot at the end of your fishing line. Make sure you knot that. Pull it out. Okay. And now I'm just going to take this fishing line. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom, come up to the top, make like a little half knot here. And then I'm going to kind of come out a different direction. See, I've kind of half knot, and I'm coming out a different direction. I'm going to pull it down nice and tight, and I'm going to start scrunching my pumpkin. As I do this, I'm going to come down to the bottom. Sorry, I'm in a little off camera here. I'm going to do the same thing, though. I do a little half knot and come out a different direction, come up to the top, 
and I'm going to start scrunching my pumpkin here. You see the, the fishing line a little bit, but not terrible because we're going to put so much cutesies on it. You don't even look at the fishing line. So just scrunching it how I want it. And then I'm going to tie my fishing line kind of in a knot and around my stem a little bit. And then I'm going to cut that off. Actually, I think I tied a knot, cut it off, and then come around my stem. Now, you don't have to go under your recipe if you decide, I want to do some sections too. You can kind of just make that fishing line kind of make sections around your recipe area there. You don't have to come up underneath like I did. And then stuff those ends of that fishing line once it's all tied and secure down into the, the center of the pumpkin near your stem. And then I'm going to just take my Fabri-Tac glue and we're going to start adding pretties. I'm adding moss all the way around it, front and back, so the back looks nice and kind of finished off. And then I'm going to add some, like some different pumpkins. I've got these from uh, Dollar Tree. I've got these things from Joann's, their Bloom Collection. I've got the Silver Dollars from Dollar Tree. Whatever you have, again, as I always say, this is from Joann's, those little spindly round things. I've seen those at Dollar Tree has some fuzzy ones. Um, and I've seen those spindly ones at Hobby Lobby too. And I'm just taking some of that ink and a wood leaf here, and I'm inking it up just kind of like we did on the acorn. All right, and then I'll go ahead and glue that in just kind of right near the stem so it's sticking up a little bit. I chose a really large leaf so that you can see it behind all our pretties. And I'm going to glue in some of those silver dollar greenery pieces there. And I've got a bow here, just some ribbon from my supply. I've made into a big bow because the tan kind of matched the tan fabric. And so I've glued that down at the base of the leaf, and now I'm going to glue in a couple of those little pumpkin uh, pieces there. Glue in those little spindly things. I don't know what they're called, but they're cute. I love the texture of them. Just however you want to do it. Glue in another little pumpkin stem here. You can put as much or as little as you want. I'm going to use some of these beaded pit berries again. I'm going to glue those in. Sometimes I get comments like, you, you're gluing too much on there. That's my preference, and that's how I like it. If you just want to do a little bit of moss, a little bit of bow, then just do it that way. It will be beautiful no matter how much or how little you want to put on there. In this spot, I took a couple of those pit berries and twisted them together and glued them into the same area. And I'm going to take a little bit of this Excelsior. I decided, you know, it didn't have enough texture from the moss. I want to add a little bit of the Excelsior here, kind of on top of the bow. And then I'm adding a little bow I made out of twine on top of that, gluing that in. And then I've got a little bow I made here out of this cute orange gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to glue that on top. And then I'm going to glue, I'm taking the darker rustic little pumpkin from Dollar Tree, gluing that in the center. And then I want to wrinkle and crinkle my larger ribbon around the little recipe here. Again, as much or as little as you want. It's all beautiful. And now I'm taking that ink, and I want to distress up the, the recipe a little bit more. Just shadowing around the edges kind of makes it pop out a little bit more, right? You can see that. And I'm going to add, you know, some more on to the ribbon on the top of where I cut that branch so it's all nice and dark, not too bright and shining around the fabric of the pumpkin. See, it looks all cute kind of crinkly there. Even if you can see that fishing line a little bit, that's okay. Then I'm going to come in with some adhesive and some pumpkin pie spice. We're going to use this on all our projects today. I'm going to spray where I want to spray that, and I'm going to sprinkle where I want to sprinkle that. And then once I'm done, that makes this project complete.
Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I have one piece of muslin fabric, 16 inches in length, 17 inches in height, all right, I'll show gluing and sewing options, of course. What you want to do is fold it in half so it's long ways, all right, because we want to glue or sew down those sides. So if you're a gluer, glue down those long sides. So it looks, we're going to make like a little bag here. If you're a sewer, of course, go ahead and sew down those long sides. All right. Perfect. Now, I want to make my bottom square so this is the sewing option okay so it can basically sit upright on its own you don't have to do this at all you can just leave it so what i want to do is make like a triangular tip here right so if you're sewer we're going to glue across and make a triangle and then we're going to or sew across and make a triangle and then we're going to glue that down so again make a little triangle here and that little triangle should kind of be the tip should be where you sewed or glued your end together okay does that make sense and then you're going to sew across that and then we're going to glue it down so this is what that would look like once you sew across you have a little triangular space there okay just like that same on the other side and then we're going to go ahead and glue in that triangular area above the sewing line and glue those down to the bottom piece this is what that would look like all right if you're a gluer, this is your gluing option. If you want to kind of have a square bottom, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pull the end into a point so that the point is where you glued the side. And then you're just going to add some glue at that top point, that little triangular area. And then you're going to fold that down. You're going to do it on both sides. Once your glue is dry, if you Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue, go ahead and turn your bag inside out. And then once you do that, where you glued it down, show you here as soon as I get it out, there's like a little space there. See that? We want to close that. So you're just going to add some glue inside that space area. Okay, as us as sewers, we sewed that down. You're going to glue it down since you were a gluer. Okay, I don't even know if I need to say that, but there you go. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Glue that space closed. Press it down, and then your bag, so you've got a nice kind of a square bottom, even without stuffing your bag, should sit upright. There it is, just like that. All right, so again, that's optional. For this part, I've got pumpkin spice here. I printed it onto some fabric. I'm going to give you a free printable with three different fonts on there so you can kind of choose which one you might like, the design option you like. And then I'm going to go ahead and rip my pumpkin spice little tag down to the size that I want, rip my fabric to that size. And then again, as I did on the big pumpkin, I want a little bit of fabric behind that. So I'm using the same fabric we used on the acorn. So all of this kind of will go together nicely. So then I'll go ahead and rip the secondary piece so that it fits behind my little pumpkin spice tag. Now, I want to kind of rustic everything up, primitive it all up. So I'm just taking that Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink, and I'm inking everything up. This big inker, you can find these in the scrapbooking section, like Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, Michael's. It's really nice because you get a handle and then a package of the little pieces that just Velcro on top. So you can use each of those little foam pieces for all the different colors. So it's kind of easy to hold, get your ink onto your projects. So I'll get this distressed how I want it to start because I will add a little bit more ink later. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and I found this bag of mini scoopers $1.99 at Hobby Lobby three to a bag and what I want to do is take some of this Waverly antique wax mixed with water and give it a little bit of a stain I wanted this to you know be like a bag of spice and you've got a scooper to scoop out your spice right so of course I will stain this all up and then once it's dry I'm going to just come in with some uh, sandpaper and just kind of you know distress around the edges a little bit once that's done, I'm going to come in with our yarn darner needles again and some thin twine, and I want to make some stitches around the little pumpkin spice tag. If you're a gluer, you can just glue it down, but if you want the look of stitches, you can take like a 
fine Sharpie marker and make little dash lines around the perimeter. And then if you want to kind of make it so those dash lines aren't really bold, you can add, you know, some of your distressing ink over them and kind of, you know, ink them out a little bit and kind of give you that same look. And I'm just adding the stitches just like we've done on the last couple of projects here, going all the way around just to kind of give it a nice, cute, country, rustic look. Once I'm done, my last stitch kind of ends on the back side here, and I'm just going to make a little stitch through the fabric so I have a little loop and then pull my twine through that loop and knot that and cut off the excess. And then we're going to go ahead and stuff our bag. I stuff it about three quarters of the way up, maybe two thirds, two thirds of the way up. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue my little pumpkin spice tag down near the bottom of the bag a little bit because I want room at the top of the bag to kind of fold it, the bag down. And then I'm going to take some more of that thin twine. I'm going to tie two ends together. Okay, normally I don't, I just, you know, use one single piece of like twine or something, but I want to tie both twines together. And then before we start sewing, I want to bring my ends in here on my bag like this, bring them in and glue it together. So I'm going to add glue on both sides of the seams and then I'm going to pinch it together on either end. And then once that sets up, I'm going to add glue through the rest of the bag and pinch it closed. Now I'm going to take some more of my vintage photo ink and I'm going to ink it up really good to stress it out, make it nice and dark. That way I can fold it down and this is what it'll look like. And then we're going to glue that little flap down so it stays in place. So if you don't want to do this next part, you can just glue it down. Now here again is my knot. I've got extra long string for a reason. I want to come from the front of the bag to the back. And for that first stitch, I have to pull it through with pliers because I'm coming through lots of layers of fabric and I'm leaving that knot with that thread hanging out. And what I wanna do is come along from the back to the front, kind of underneath that knot, back to the front, and then I wanna come up over our ledge of fabric here, right above it, and then pull that needle from the front to the back. Again, gotta use the pliers here, and then it'll get easier. And then I'm gonna go from the back to the front, come over about a half inch, right underneath that flap, pull it through, up over onto the flap, front to the back. So I'm just making little closed stitches here. You know, like we've got our little bag all stitched closed. It looks really cute. I'm gonna do this all the way across. Double layer twine, like I said, because then you can see the stitches a little better too. And then once I get my last stitch, I'm gonna come at the end from the back to the front, pull it through. We're going through lots of layers of fabric cut my needle off that thread and then I'm going to make a little knot here and then I will cut off a little bit of the thread here but still want that knot and a little bit of excess thread to show and then I'll adjust the other side to make it match okay and then this is what it looks like really super cute and then I'm going to come in and take some thicker twine that I get from Walmart and I just want to wrap it three or four times right above that pumpkin spice uh, tag and below our little flap and then I want to go ahead and just glue it into position the front and back so it doesn't you know pop off and then I'm going to take that little scooper and I'm going to glue that down in the center of like a half you know I started like a knot there a little half knot glue the scooper down and then finish the knot with that twine glue that down so it doesn't fall off and then make a little bow here Cute, cute, cute. And then I'm going to cut off the excess and I'm going to tie a little knot on each end and kind of smoosh out the remaining end that's hanging off there just to give it a little personality. Perfect. And I've got a couple of buttons here and a rusty safety pin. And I'm going to add those buttons right and that rusty safety pin right through the center of that bow. Get that closed. And then I've got some Putka pods, P-U-T-K-A, and I'm going to glue that right next to those buttons. You can find these. I've seen them at like Joann's and Hobby Lobby and that. Order them online at like Etsy. And then I'm using my spray adhesive right and my actual pumpkin spice. And I'm adding some into my scoop, like a double layer in the scoop. Like, you know, I didn't, I scooped some pumpkin spice out, but didn't get it all off my scoop. And then I'm adding it other places around on the bag. So it kind of matches a little bit. Get a little bit more down here at the bottom. And then when I flip it over and I tap off the excess and I kind of rub off that spice, it kind of adds a little bit more like quote unquote staining to it. So I'm going to just 
spread some more pumpkin spice on that. And then I'm going to add some of this glitter dust. I love it. It's sheer with a little bit of silver shimmer to it. I'll have a link down below where I get it on Etsy. I'm just going to spray a little bit on the bag. And then that makes this project complete. So I hope you like what I came up with today. I think this pumpkin spice bag, it might be my favorite. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out, or maybe you came over from Jen's channel or Tracy's channel. If you're digging what you saw here today, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Thank you again to my sweet friends, Jen and Tracy, for collaborating with me today to bring lots of fun fall inspiration to all our viewers. I just love working with both you gals. You just, you make my heart happy. Remember, everybody, I will have a link down below to the playlist. I'll have their channel links in the description box as well, but I'll have a link down below to the playlist as well as pinned in my comments. So you can find all our videos in one convenient location. I can't imagine that any of you aren't subscribed to their channels, but if you're not, when you go over there and you check their videos out, make sure before you click off their videos, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from them and leave a comment and let them know I sent you. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. No matter what twists and turns you may have taken in the past, it doesn't mean that God doesn't have another path ready and waiting for you. A path of healing and strength. A path of survival and positive thoughts. A path that leads you to the place where He is determined is best for your heart, mind, and soul. This place leads straight into the arms of Jesus. Just because your past may have dictated a negative thought that replays over and over when you least expect it, or maybe it constantly leaves you feeling like you just aren't worth much, God says, you are worth everything to me. Don't allow the losses in your life to be swallowed up by the enemy to be used at a later date. Don't allow him to keep you dragged down with heavy burdens that seem impossible to allow you to get back up. God has far more faith in you than that. God will continuously keep giving you the tools to fight while you stay standing in his protection as you defeat the snares of the enemy. God chose you to stand up and fight. He chose you to overcome. He chose you to flip the light switch on and watch the darkness of the enemy fade away. Walk in the knowledge that you are predestined for greatness in the eyes of the Lord. Walk in the knowledge that God trusts you to do mighty things for him. He trust you. Imagine that thought that God has 100% faith in you. Walk in the knowledge that you are anointed by the Most High God who made you without mistake. Nothing, not even your past, can stand in the future that God has planned for you. Feel His grace as He picks up the pieces with His forgiveness to allow you to move forward with the potential that He has given you. You must fight for who you are in God and what He made you to be. Leave behind the brokenness discouragement, depression, or whatever it is the enemy chains you with and stand on the firm foundation that God indeed has a hope and future for your life, a future of possibilities that he has planned just for you. Allow his light to push away the darkness. Allow his love to drop the chains. Allow yourself to stand with God for a new beginning. Trust that he has the exact roadmap you need to succeed in this life. See the purpose he has for you. See and taste that what God prepared for you is indeed good. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.